Tom here from Lawrence Systems, and this is the Bly KVM. Full disclosure up front, this was sent to me for review, and my opinions are my own. They do not get any editorial or any commentary they can put on this. They're watching a video the same time as you and this review. That being said, I do like it. I want to disclose the price up front of $159 now here in late December of 2023, which I think is very reasonable for an IP KVM, but you may find it unreasonable, so I wanted to put that at the beginning of the video so you can decide if you want to keep watching further. I've been testing this for a little while, and I even opened it up, took it apart, because this was, I believe, one of the first units they had made. Found a couple screws missing in it. No big deal. It didn't affect anything. They shipped me the screws separately. They were in a bag, so it actually came with extra screws, and I solved that problem, but nothing was actually loose because this thing is made of metal and really well built. So let's dive into the review. I want to talk about what comes in the box when you order this and what all you get for $159. We're going to start with, you get some rack gears, you get the device, you also get these ATX adapter boards, one tall, one short, in case you have a half height. Then you get eight screws, but for some reason they put 10 in a box for me, which I think is because the two were missing. Then you get these ATX cables. Now the ATX cables, I was confused because there's two of them, but then I realized this is so you can put them in the case and still use the buttons and lights on the case in addition to having the buttons and the lights here for the ATX adapter boards. It's essentially a pass-through. It allows you to control it both from the IPKVM and from the case at the same time. Now, if we take a look at the back of the device, we see there's actually three ways to power it. There is the 5-volt in USB-C. We have a 12-volt barrel adapter. And my preferred way and the way I've been powering it is PoE. So yes, it does support PoE and boots up rather fast in under 60 seconds. Then we have our HDMI in and HDMI out. We have a Wi-Fi antenna. We also have an RJ45 adapter that allows us to connect it via a standard network cable to the other system. I like doing this instead of having a weird proprietary cable so you can adjust and make it to the length that works for you. Now let's open up and take a look in the device itself and you can see it's all solid, really well made metal, and besides those two screws being a little bit missing and maybe the other ones being a little bit loose, I haven't had any issues with it from a build quality standpoint. Matter of fact, being passively cooled means it's completely silent and it really doesn't get too hot at all. I do like the front panel display on it. It's easy to read and gives me the information I want, which is really the IP address of the device when it boots up. So I don't have to find it on my network. I can just look at it at a glance and understand what IP address I got so I can log into it. Now, while the Bly KVM displays text perfectly fine, I wanted to plug in something a little bit different. This is a Synology VS600 HD that I'm reviewing, but I've tested this with Windows machines and Linux machines as they boot up. It has no problems changing resolutions and the scaling works quite well. You do get a nice on-screen keyboard if you need to press any of the buttons. I also like the fact that they have the ability to send text. So if you have a complicated password and you would like to have that sent here, you can just hit submit and it will type that out for you as opposed to trying to type something long and complicated on the keyboard. Now down here, they have the power on, power off buttons. These press the ATX buttons that are connected. If you have them in use, it actually does not reset the KVM itself. I'll also note that they have a wake on LAN option. This is nice if you have a system that you need to wake up and it's on the same network as this device. Now, one interesting feature, but it's not very well polished, is the ability to load ISOs right into the KVM and then use them to boot. And let me show you how this kind of works. It jumps from select all the way to four because we got to go to connect to host. But then you're like, how do we change to a different image? Well, you have to hit previous, previous. Then we can select the image such as Proxmox, XCPNG, or I've got a Debian on here. And then we can next, next. And now that one's attached. This can be a little bit buggy and a little bit fiddly, but I think this is really promising to be able to have several images in here and it builds them all as ISO images on Ventoy, which is kind of neat that it boots up like a Ventoy instance when it comes up, but it won't let you choose all of them at once, or at least I haven't figured out how to make it do that. You do have to select each one. And when you select these, or you do have the ability to upload them, the system just overall feels a little buggy with this, but it can be updated in software. This is their GitHub page with all of the code that drives this. This is also where you can get more updates, but you can update it from the command line as well, which we'll log in in just a moment. 
Now they do have a wiki page, I'll leave a link to as well, that has a lot of more detailed information in there. Lots of the little stuff in terms of like the default password, which is just admin, admin, and a video from Jeff that's embedded in here. And maybe in the future, they'll embed my video here as well. It does capture without a problem all the way up to 4K at 30 hertz. Once you go over that, it just displays bars on the screen if you try to do something that's at a resolution that's not supported. But so far, all the devices I've tested have not had any issues at all. Now, SSH is enabled by default. Username is going to be Black KVM and password is Black KVM. And you'll find just RMBM under the hood. Apt-get update works fine. Of course, sudo apt-get update to update the base OS. They do have instructions on our GitHub how to pull the latest version of the project. It ships with it installed. The Git process is relatively simple to update it from the command line via SSH. Now, besides the kind of quirkiness with the Ventoy ISO upload interface, which I'm hoping, as I said, will improve with time and better software updates, I haven't had any other issues with this. This thing works great. I th think it is just a really compelling solution compared to the commercial options out there. The fact that they're able to produce a whole system on a chip that, yes, it's less power than a Raspberry Pi, but it's still enough power to do what it needs to do and run a high-res screen and be able to display, well, all these little mini PCs that have been testing and everything else. I think this is really a good deal, but hey, ultimately, it's up to you. I'm just offering you some data, some experience for me using it, Leave your thoughts and comments down below if this is something you're interested in or you're just prefer motherboards that have IPMI as I do, but unfortunately there's a few that don't. But either way, let me know what you think down below. Like and subscribe if you want to see more content from this channel. All the links I mentioned are also in the description below. And hit me up in my forums at forums.lawrencesystems.com to talk about this or other topics you want to talk about that I've covered on my channel. Thanks.